new boards arrived. It's the Z97 uh, Meg Unify from MSI. Got the ES10900K in there. You can see it's actually got a decent number of power phases on this board. So it's got no silly voltage limit of 1.3 volts for the V core like the Gigabyte did. It's got two 8 pin power connectors for the CPU. I've got the MSI 2080 Ti in there to match the MSI board. Uh, this board is kind of a, a bare bones uh, overclocking board, well not really but it's it's more of a stripped down than your average gaming board, it doesn't have any RGB or any fancy stuff like that on. It does have Wi-Fi, it does have a PS2 port um, but yeah it doesn't have any of the more gaming features in it, it has more overclocking features like the button and the postcode reader here so that's good and it also has a switch to turn off the LEDs although there aren't very many of them on the board so it doesn't really matter so yeah the main thing is the voltages and the VRM is going to be better put the water block on it now so we actually have cooling I guess uh, now that we have some voltage I'll be able to um, overpower what we could do with the 1.3 volts on the air cooler so here's the board booted up. You can see the the postcode LED is uh, white instead of red like it normally is, which is pretty nice. Once you get into Windows, it does read the temperature of uh, core zero from the BIOS, which is pretty nice as well. The LED off switch just turns the lights off for the power button and the reset button. There's also um, a BIOS reset button on the back, a CMOS reset. I've got the blue LED fan uh, blowing on the memory in the VRM today because it's Intel so we need the blue fan rather than the red one which I use for AMD. You can see the uh, 2080 Ti is lit up in all its RGB glory. Unfortunately I can't be bothered to turn that off. I have to install some crappy software. So yeah, um, you can see I did a bit of messing around last night. So the CPU is at 4.9 at uh, 1.29 volts and the memory is at 4000 C15 at the moment so um, the nice thing about this board is once it comes out of the EZ mode which is uh, this screen here and you go into advanced mode and you're overclocking it's set up in expert straight away so you have all of the the settings there rather than your normal mode which is for obviously uh, gaming plebs and turbo noobs and whatnot. So yeah we have 4.9 this was just on air cooling so I couldn't go too ham on the voltage. Um, I used one of these memory presets which it has here the mem try it thing these are quite good uh, all they do really is just set you some basic uh, RAM timings, your primaries there, they don't set your TRFC so that's at some crazy number, 747 in this case but it has set 4000, 1515 or 1516, 1636 2T and obviously this is only going to work on BDI memory uh, I'm guessing and it also sets the memory voltage to 1.5 volts which is perfectly fine so that's good Run more than that on a uh, Ryzen running 1.6 to get 3800C14. But obviously, with the secondary timings being so loose down here, obviously it only needs 1.5 volts. But uh, we'll go into Windows and see what the temperatures are like um, in a sec. So it does have overclocking profiles that you can save as well, like an Asus board. I haven't used an MSI board for a while and it does have a, a fan thing here where you can set your fan speed. I've just got the CPU fan on 100% because you can see this fan only spins at 1200 RPM anyway so it's not particularly loud. It's just to blow a bit of air over the memory on the VRM area. Now this board does actually have a VRM fan. There's a little cut out for it there which I didn't realise. Uh, I think it's this MOS one here but you can see it's not actually spinning at the moment but it goes to like 9 or 10,000 RPM 
So the um, the CPU game boost thing over here literally just boosts the CPU by 200 megahertz and uh, shoves a load of voltage for it, like 1.37 or something crazy. I tried both the XMP profiles. The XMP2 profile, which is at 4266, works fine, but it was having some trouble booting 4400. I'm guessing that is because it wasn't setting the SA voltage and the IO voltage high enough there uh, on auto. So I'm, I'm going to stick with 4000 anyway. There's no point me running super fast RAM until I've tightened it up a bit. I want to run like 4000 um, C16 or C15 like it is now but on much tighter timing so I'll fix that later. But I do want to get the core and the ring ratio sorted out first. So let's boot into Windows. So I've got here this PDF of a uh, hardware but for the uh, extreme overclocking guide for this board. Obviously I'm just on water but it's still uh, pretty useful. It tells you sort of the average overclock and voltages to expect. Um, what memory overclocks you can over expect with single and dual rank memory. So with single rank that I've got it should really boot the XMP at 4400 and it says I should be able to get 4500 out of it really. But yeah we're going to stick around 4000. You can see it says uh, these timing things here that I was enabled in the BIOS for the presets work on all types of memory but I think you'd have the best luck using Samsung B-Die. Um, okay so there's some other memory presets here that are for LN2 overclocking really and uh, better memory controllers. I'm guessing there will be actual tight timings at 4000 C14. Might try those later. Don't know what that is. And then it has some voltages uh, when you use LN2 mode, which you don't really need. And then this is the safe voltage range. Uh, when it says general, it means like water overclocking, really. Um, ambient overclocking, we'll say. And obviously LN2 um, is for LN2. These voltages probably aren't what you're supposed to run daily, so these are quite quite high. So I think th these these are just max safe voltages for benching, really. And then there's a really useful thing of uh, the postcode down here. So when you're looking at the postcode reader when it's booting up, um, it tells you what uh, what it's failed on or what it should be, so you know what to increase. So you can go back to here and say, oh yeah, it's that one, I can increase that one a bit and then see if it does it again. So yeah, and also in Windows, that's reading the CPU temperature now. So the CPU is at 34 degrees on one core. So that is pretty nice. Anyway, we'll close that. i also got a couple of other tools here. MSI Dragon Power. Uh, this is again off the hardware bot Extreme Pack. So it looks like you can load a profile and overclock from here. Uh, let's see, we've also got this Dragon Ball. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, there we go. That's for memory timings. Okay. So this Dragon Ball software here is for looking at the memory timings, which is uh, pretty useful. It's got a few profiles you can set up. That's nice. And then this MSI Dragon Power is like MSI Command Center, I'm guessing, but a lightened version, a bit like that Asus Turbo V Core thing that I use on my Asus AMD boards. So these are two of the tools I'm going to be using. Let's see if it actually works. So the minute you can see it's at 1.29 volts and 4.9 gigahertz. So I'm just going to change that to 48, press apply, 
and you can see it's gone to 4.8 so yeah that's, that is working fine so I can actually overclock from inside windows I've now set the memory to a uh, more reasonable TRFC and T4 and stuff so we're still running um, 4000 megahertz and I'm just going to do the same thing what I did on the gigabyte board the other day so you can see the temperature down there about 61 degrees nice and cool and you can see the postcode reader over here is reading the same as core 1 so oh, it's actually reading core package temperature which is 59 now oh, it's gone down to 20 you can see that's 20 so that's CPU package temperature and you can see it runs uh, Cinebench very easily uh, this is at 4.9 so there we go and you can see the voltage is reached a peak of 1.35 volts and it's just sitting around 1.3 I have got the load line calibration set to the flattest line so I think this has like modes and it's mo eight, mo 8 modes maybe so and it's on like mode 3 which is the one that's flat there's a couple that overshoot quite a lot above that so we'll run our 20 as well so you can see what it does with something a bit heavier six thousand two hundred points and max temperature of sixty one on the core sixty two on the package so you can see that's uh, pretty stable right there so what we're going to do is we're going to close that because we don't really need it just going to have R15 open here and we're going to use the um, MSI Dragon Power thing to overclock it we've scored higher already you can see down there it's at 5.1 now I think it's frozen there you can see package temperatures gone down to 28 so we can't do 5.1 at 1.3 volts we'll need some more voltage for that surprised it haven't blue screened yet I'll have to... right I'm back in windows here again now just had to uh, press the reset button to get it to restart so we clearly need more than 1.3 volts uh, I'm interested to see what we actually can go up to voltage wise in terms of temperature uh, let's see how high we can go then so we'll try 5.1 again that's more like it try 5.2 don't know whether Intel can't go in little steps like AMD where you do like 5.15 and stuff like that so we'll just have to go straight to 5.2 right okay so yeah it does look like it's crashed at 5.2 it's a bit disappointing so it looks like we're stuck at 5.1